Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Peugeot 307. Mechanical transmissions on Peugeot are hard to call a model of reliability. B4-5 series transmissions suffer from oil leaks, as a result of which the bearings of the input shaft, clutches and gears of the third and fifth gears, as well as the differential bearings, fail. It is better to regularly check the oil seals and the presence of oil in the box, otherwise expensive repairs will have to be done. The compatibility of boxes and engines is not the best, there are a lot of options and there are very few contract units, especially in the living state. Not happy with the cost of dual mass flywheels, but fortunately you can put clutch kits with a conventional damper in flywheels from the Peugeot 3 or 6 here. Well, now about the main automatic transmission. It is even worse than mechanics here. The AL4 DPO box, which is joined for PSA Renault, is not too expensive to repair, but not everyone survives to hundreds of thousands of mileage. And only phlegmatic people who know a lot about automatic transmission service can drive 150 to 100 on it. The problems with this box are complex, but they are usually solved successfully due to the simplicity and manufacturability of the design. The root cause of most problems is overheating. It is embedded in the design itself because a very weak heat exchanger prone to pollution is used here. And if you want to operate the car for a long time, it is better to immediately replace it with the adapter and a decent sized external radiator with a thermostat. The second reason for trouble is the design of the box oil filter. Few people change it with the mileage of less than 100,000, although its design usually already requires replacement after 60,000 mileage. And then the chain, the dirty filter, a drop in oil pressure, seizure of a bushings, a new contamination of the filter and the death of the box is triggered. Cars before 2003 have weak EPC and TCC solenoids, but you are unlikely to encounter OE parts. This is possible only if the car is really found from under the grandfather and its mileage is less than 50,000. On later cars, these parts are always changed in the event of excessive oil contamination. The oil in this box doesn't last longer than 60,000 km, but it is better to change it in 2-3 times more often. The valve body also lives until the first overheating. Its plate bends when overheated and after that even replacing the solenoids doesn't help. Fortunately, the element is not too expensive. Without solenoids, it will cause 16,000 troubles and assembled about 35-45,000. The box seals are also afraid of overheating and the Teflon back cover rings are one of the most frequently replaced parts. In short, the life of this automatic transmission in the default configuration is not too long and happy. However, the design is quite robust and simple and spare parts are inexpensive. The situation can be significantly improved by installing a normal cooling system with a fine filter and gentle travel modes. This helps in combination with engines with a volume of less than 2 liters and a torque of less than 200 nanometers. With 2 liter engines and diesels, this automatic transmission will not last long in any case. This automatic transmission is noticeably more reliable, although it also, low, it also allows more frequent maintenance than the regulations require and an additional radiator for cooling and if the oil is contaminated, it suffers from problems with the valve body. But with not the most powerful engines on the Peugeot 307, there are practically no problems with it until the runs of 200-250,000, when the blocking linings of the gas turbine engine wear out and other resource difficulties begin. Peugeot's pre-EP6 gasoline engines were not that bad. You could say the motors were even good. That small size TUs that larger EW stars were missing from the sky, but the EW10J4S RFK turned out to be one of the most highly powered naturally inspired engines in Europe, but this engine variant is extremely rare. The company clearly didn't focus on the development of automotors. The brand's strong point is diesels, which PSA has sold and licensed to a branch of car manufacturers to produce them. But surprisingly, diesel engines in the Peugeot 307 are not particularly popular. The Peugeot 2.0 HDI engine can be found much more often under the hood of the Ford Focus than under the hood of the 307s. All engines are quite durable, there are definitely no unsuccessful modes among gasoline ones. Diesel engines sometimes raise questions, but due to the low popularity of these engines, it is difficult to say something for sure. The key to successful operation is good temperature conditions of the motors and the cooling system made with a fair amount and the Bosch ME7.4 control system works reliably and correctly. If the catalysts are replaced on time and the oil level is not allowed to drop, especially on TU engines, where there is very little of it, then the engines work well. 
of the Frank Manuses, a tendency to an old appetite which manifests itself after hundreds of thousands of runs due to weak oil seals, including valve oil seals and an unsuccessful crankcase ventilation system. The TU5 engine and structurally similar ET3, as well as the 8-valve TU3, are based on a single-cylinder block, have a timing belt drive, collectors, variable intake, and are generally very conservative. More precisely, the TU5 JP4, TU3 JP, and ET3 J4 were installed on the Peugeot 307. The cylinder block is made of cast iron, there are no fashionable face shifters. But there is a simple injection system and a simple spring-loaded timing belt tensioner in general old school as it is. There are no particularly expensive components, there are no frankly weak points, except for the small volume of the oil bed, about 3.5 liters, and the sensitivity of the engine to lowering its level. Throttle valve breakdowns can be easily solved with a repair kit that costs less than 1000 rubles. The SAGM ignition coil is not very durable, but even the original is relatively inexpensive, not to mention good analogs. The engine easily acquires an oil appetite due to the occurrence of pests and rains, and the oil level must be monitored carefully. Do not allow damage to the valve seals, it is best to change them along with the timing belt on older motors every 60-80,000 km. And if you do not want to bend the valves, be sure to change all the front cover seals. But the crankcase ventilation system, due to which these problems arise, requires regular replacement of pipes, or better, modernization with the installation of the PCV valve and an increase in the opening in the throttle space to improve gas exchange and reduce excess pressure. By the way, if the upper ventilation hose is already spreading, 4062-1147-103 from gas is a good fit, support the domestic manufacturer. It is also worth monitoring the tightness of the intake. There is an intake manifold of not most successful shape prone to leaks. But otherwise, the motor is not at all troublesome, with reasonable maintenance it is ready to travel 250 or more thousand kilometers. There were even copies with a mileage of more than 350,000 without obvious signs of major repairs and in good condition. While the elimination of vibrations and other minor troubles is not that expensive, and even if as a result of poor maintenance there is already an oil appetite, it is not too expensive to eliminate it. The engine is easy to repair and the piston engine even tolerates the occurrence of rings without any problems. It is also important after the first 200 km not to forget to change the oil pump drive chain in the crankcase and to monitor the cleanliness of the oil reservoir, preventing the formation of sludge in the crankcase. Larger 2-liter EW series motors are less common. Basically, there are EW10J4 and EW10A with a capacity of 136-140 forces. There is also a very powerful 177 horsepower EW10J4S, but it is almost impossible to find a car with such an engine. The design of these motors is very different from the younger TU series, but even here a healthy conservatism is visible in everything. True, the phase shifter on the intake shaft is put on all versions. Otherwise, it is also a great motor. Even the volume of the oil stump has been increased to 5.25 liters, which reduces the risk of being left without oil when oil appetite is manifested. True, the oil consumption of these motors is noticeably higher. There is a greater tendency to oil leaks through the covers and more frequent overheating. A traditional but minor problem of motors is flying adaptations and sensitivity to the state of lambda sensors. Adaptations can be fixed everywhere, but lambdas are quite expensive here. It is better to change the timing belt more often, a maximum once every 60,000 km. It becomes more oily here and the load on it is higher. Potentially, the engine resource is about 350,000, but on engine motors, it is worth closely monitoring the oil pressure. In advanced cases, you can be left without the crankshaft and with a hole in the block, especially in the case of using low viscosity SAE30 oils and elevated engine temperatures. The main problems of a 2-liter engine are associated with the operation of the engine management system. It is somewhat more capricious here, more often it requires replacing the spark plugs, the ignition modules fails more often, the nozzles are clogged more often, and even the fuel pump fails more often than on 1.6-liter engines. And you can remember the story of 2006, when a whole batch of motors received faulty cylinder heads. As a result, the motors consumed oil in an increased volume, and many owners were faced with hanging valves. On this information about the problems of the Peugeot 307 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.